Uh, claims by out campaigners that Turkey could join the European Union within the next 10 years have been criticised by the in campaign. Well, uh, that's uh, one of the issues we're going to be discussing a bit later on, but uh, Labour has been failing to speak for England. That's according to the former Shadow Cabinet Minister Tristram Hunt, who's put together a new book of essays about how the party can, in his words, show its affection for England. He argues that Labour must embrace patriotism and acknowledge concerns about immigration. Well, Tristram Hunt joins me now. And a very good morning to you, Mr morning, Hunt. Uh, now, uh, one of these uh, quotations uh, pulled out of this uh, book of essays. I'm a white working class Englishman who isn't on benefits. Labour isn't for people like me. Heard by one of Labour's candidates it's on the doorstep at last year's general election. Did, did, did that come as a shock to you? I think it spoke to a, a, a broader sense out there, which somehow the, the Labour Party is disconnecting from an English identity. And what this, what this collection of, uh, of essays is about is former Labour uh, candidates in the 2015 general election, uh, existing MPs, saying how much we admire England, how much we love the heritage, identity, the culture of England. And as more and more people identify themselves as English rather than British, we have to show in the Labour Party that we understand this, this new power of national identity. And if men in Harlow or Stevenage or Portsmouth or Cumbria say, I'm English and I don't think the Labour Party is on my side, then we've got a real problem with that. So you've got to become a bit more UKIP. No, we are an internationalist party, we're an anti-racist party, we're a party that believes in the union, we want Scotland and England to be part of, of Great Britain, but we also have to appreciate that when it comes to issues like the devolution of power to great cities, a, a referendum mm. on an English parliament, even, in my view, a, a national holiday for well, St George's I, I Day. Didn't say we, that, we, yeah, we, we I didn't say that facetiously, that. I mean, you know, they're revisiting the general election, you saw it, I mean, you know, Ed Balls uh, cites it as one of the reasons he lost his seat, in that Labour vote Voters, some of them went to UKIP. Absolutely. In, in, in communities like Hartlepool and Grimsby, my own constituency of Stoke-on-Trent, we are losing historically Labour communities to UKIP voters. And I think that is as much about culture as it is about economics. And if we don't if, if voters don't think that we culturally understand them, what they value about family and faith and community and country, if the Labour Party looks too much like a sort of metropolitan, southern, uh, uh, cosmopolitan party, not speaking to their values, then they're going to move away from us. And that will be devastating for us in the long run. And I think John Crudders has, has pointed to that into a new report. Yeah. But, um, but isn't the elephant in the room for all this? I mean, you talk about that and, you know, maybe flying the flag of St George might, uh, might address it ever so slightly. But so many people, these people on the doorstep, would have mentioned immigration as yes. one of their key concerns. Yes. And our failure to talk about immigration was a real problem. The challenge here is that actually our policies on immigration at the last general election were not that bad. Actually, they, they were pretty progressive, good policies, which dealt with pretty, many of these... Pretty much the ones the, the, the government's putting Many of the issues, exactly. But people felt we were nervous about talking about it because as soon as you, you talk about immigration, you have the, the, the fear of, of, of being labelled racist. And what we have to show is that we can talk about immigration because it's often not about race when it comes to East European uh, migration, but we have have to talk to those communities which have faced extraordinary change over the last 10 years. We have seen this great wave of change come in to the country. And if the Labour Party is saying, oh, don't worry about that, it's just, it's good for the NHS, it's good for public services, don't worry. Actually, a lot of people are worrying, mm. and we do have to but talk about it. how are you going to change that mindset? Because when the mask slips, or in that spot, when people don't realise the microphone is on, we had Gordon Brown in the 2010 general election referring to Gillian Duffy as bigoted, and uh, as recently as last week, the Shadow Europe Minister, Pat Glass, talking about a, a horrible racist. Uh, you know, when the mask slips, that's how many people within the Labour Party think about people when they raise concerns about immigration and immigrants. Well, this is why we need, we need a, a root and branch rethinking of this issue within the culture of our party. Because if people think we're only saying one thing in this studio, but if when I leave this studio, I think something else, well, mm. they're not going to trust us. It is not racist to talk about immigration. It is not racist to uh, uh, reflect on the changes that happen to communities. But we also do that with our values. We are an anti-racist party. We value the contribution of immigration to this country. But we also know that in certain parts of the community, it's having really dramatic 
changes, and we need to speak to that, and then we need to have policies to deal with that. So, you know, where what school, are the policies well, above and beyond? Yeah. I mean, apart from, uh, I was trying not to mention the European Union, but yes. apart from leaving the European Union, you cannot control entry into the into the UK from members of the European Union. Well, obviously, we've got we've got the change on benefits, which the Prime Minister has negotiated, uh, which is meant to affect some of the uh, the pool factors. Ed Balls has once again raised this morning this issue of are we going to have to look at the free movement of labour as part of a reformed European Union in the future? But what we have to to do also is make sure that when it comes to depressing wages, when it comes to uh, housing stock, when it comes to all those social conditions which can exacerbate the impact of immigration, we have a view there. So in Lincolnshire, really big impact of immigration in lots of communities. Do we now have the funds that can go specifically to those areas for the schools, the hospitals, the public services to deal with that? But do we also say to people who are affected by this, we understand that you are nervous when you hear language change, when you hear culture change in your community. And we have to help you deal with and manage that. And just to ignore it is All when right. people will turn well, away from the party. Well, you know what people are going to say as well, aren't they? I mean, this isn't even a coded message for Jeremy Corbyn and his cohorts. It's a, it's a direct shot across the bows because what you describe from the last general election, of course, took uh, place under Ed Miliband, so he didn't get it. It hasn't changed under Jeremy Corbyn, has it? Well, I think it does need to change. I mean, I think what but you would say to Jeremy do... Corbyn, if Ed Miliband didn't get it, Jeremy Corbyn doesn't either. Well, I, I haven't seen much sign uh, of, of, <laughs> Any... of, of a change of, uh, of a change of view there, and that's why myself, John Crudders, uh, others, we're asking the difficult questions because there's there's no point having lost two general elections and uh, the issue of immigration and cultural change being a really big question for uh, for, for Labour voters. For us, simply to say, oh, don't worry, we don't want to raise it. It's all too complicated. Whether the leaders, Ed Miliband or Jeremy Corbyn, I think that would be a dereliction of my duty as a Labour MP. You're saying to the current leadership, if you don't get this message, given the scale of the task, if Scotland's gone, given the scale of the task for Labour in England, if you don't get this message, we lose again. Absolutely. And there's a, there's a beautiful essay by my colleague Jamie Reid uh, uh, from, from Copeland on this and ha of how l the Labour Party in the north of England, if it doesn't understand the culture, the identity, the feelings of its communities, will lose just like the Democrats in the American South lost. And so this is as much about the, the material economics, this is as much about working tax credits, this is as much uh, about those kind of nuts and bolts as it is saying to these communities, we understand what you, you value, we value it as well and part of that is a strong sense of English identity. Okay Tristan Hunt very good to see you thank you very good much.